Welcome back to the Great Man Podcast. My name is Maxim, and today we're going to be talking about John Taylor Gatto. John Taylor Gatto was born on December 15th, 1935. And relatively early on in his life, John knew that he wanted to be a teacher. And so while he was teaching, he noticed over time, he was actually doing kids harm. And so after teaching for 30 years, he wrote many, many books on the reasons why our education system is completely wrong and bad for kids. He was named New York City Teacher of the Year in 1989, 1990, and 1991, as well as the New York State Teacher of the Year in 1991 as well. John Taylor Gatto also ran for the New York State Senate 29th District in 1985 and 1988 as a member of the Conservative Party of New York. After he was named New York State Teacher of the Year in 1991, he announced his retirement titled I quit, I think. In the op-ed pages of the Wall Street Journal, he said that he didn't want to hurt kids to make a living anymore. John Taylor Gatto would also promote homeschooling, obviously, because he was so against what he saw within schools. And he had a unique view of what was going on because he was a teacher. After being a teacher for nearly 30 years and writing many of his books, he later died just recently, within the past couple years. Now, I personally read his book, Dumbing Us Down, which was a really good book, and I recommend everybody should read it, specifically the people that have kids or are wanting to have kids because it will show you even more that you should not put them in any education system. Within this book, Dumbing Us Down, he has a couple different points. He has seven points as to why schooling is not good. Number one, it confuses the students. It presents an incoherent ensemble of information that the child needs to memorize to stay in school. Apart from the tests and trials, this programming is similar to the television. It fills almost all the free time of children. One sees and hears something, only to forget it again. Which this is obviously true. You can think back to when you were in school and you go, well, I kind of remembered everything throughout the school year, but as soon as summer came around, I forgot everything. Which is the case for everyone, because kids within school don't really care about it. And why should they? I even had teachers tell me that what they were teaching didn't really matter, that you weren't going to use it in real life. And that was teachers saying that directly. So it's a bit strange. Number two, it teaches them to accept their class affiliation. Basically that they belong to that class and they are within that class. They cannot leave it. They're going to stay there. Number three, it makes them indifferent. Number four, it makes them emotionally dependent. And number five, it makes them intellectually dependent. They're dependent on the teacher because the teacher is basically the all-knowing person that you have to bow down to. And I promise you that even though they have to read through their own textbooks to remember what they're teaching, they know everything and you should go to them for everything you need. I remember the last time I was in school, I'm homeschooled now, but the last time I was in school, I would constantly hear teachers talk about how they had to review the notes for class and they would have their own textbooks for what they were supposed to teach. If the teachers really know something, why would they have to read through another textbook to remember what they know or what they should know? I remember my math teachers going, well, I don't really understand this and it's this way of solving these problems doesn't really make sense, but I'm going to go over it and try to remember it before class so that they can teach it. Why does that make sense? And the fact is, it doesn't make sense. Number six, it teaches them a kind of self-confidence that requires constant confirmation by experts. Your teacher is the expert. They know everything about the subject they're teaching. Every little detail and you go to them for help. And number seven, it makes it clear to them that they cannot hide because they are always supervised. If you think about it, even when you would raise your hand to go to the bathroom, there would be teachers walking in the halls, sometimes the principal would be walking in the halls, and there would always be an eye kept on you, no matter where you went. And you couldn't hide, you couldn't escape. You always had to follow the rules. And if you didn't follow the rules, you were a outcast, a rebel, and the teachers would end up not liking you. And, well, since the teacher is the all-knowing one, then the students also follow in the footsteps of the teacher and end up not liking you either. Everybody has beliefs. And what separates a great man from just an average man 
is that the great man puts his beliefs into action. He actually believes in what he's doing. So John Taylor Gatto saw that things were bad, really bad, so much worse than most people could think of, a lot worse than parents could ever imagine. And so he decided that he was going to expose this, and he did exactly that through his books. One of the most interesting parts of his book, Dumbing Us Down, was this. Our form of compulsory schooling is an invention of the state of Massachusetts around 1850. It was resisted, sometimes with guns, by an estimated 80% of the Massachusetts population. The last outposts in Barnstable on Cape Cod not surrendering its children until the 1880s, when the area was seized by a militia and the children marched to school under guard. The children marched to school under guard by this group that was from likely from the state because the state created the schooling in the first place in 1850. Now here's a curious idea to ponder. Senator Ted Kennedy's office released a paper not too long ago claiming that, the, that prior to compulsory education, the state literacy rate was 98%, and after it, the figure never exceeded 91%, where it stands in 1990. So, for parents, that part alone, where the kids were forced to go, people with guns, guards, marching them to school, should make you think a little bit about why schooling started this way. And if the literacy rate before schooling, compulsory schooling, was 98%, then it drops down to 91%, that's in 1990, it's probably w much worse now, then it shows a lot about school. John Taylor Gatto also said, schools were designed by Horace Mann and by Sears and Harper of the University of Chicago, and by Thorndike of Columbia Teachers College, and by some other men to be instruments of the scientific management of a mass population. Schools are intended to produce, through the application of formulas, formulaic human beings whose behavior can be predicted and controlled. Which makes sense. Everybody learns the same thing. Sure, different states have different curriculums, but they're all basically the same thing. Everybody is learning the same thing. Everybody's doing the same thing. They're all going in the same direction. And one of the major parts about it is that kids end up losing the love for learning, which is going to make it so that they're very lost later in life when they don't know what to do because they're not interested in anything. And John Taylor Gatto was interested in making the future better. That's what great men care about. They care about making the future better. And kids are the future, literally. So he noticed a problem, a very big problem, and he could see that these kids were not going to go anywhere, anywhere, because they were being told what to do, when to do this, when to do that, what they were learning. They can't say anything, but you have to really trust your teachers because they're all-knowing messiahs. And Dumbing Us Down was published in 1991. I can guarantee you that for a fact, it is much, much worse now. Partially because of the introduction of politics into education. It is overwhelmingly taking over education in schools. And I've seen it firsthand. I mean, the stories that I have are just crazy. But this isn't really a political channel, so... But anyway, John Taylor Gatto was a great man because he believed in doing what was right. He had beliefs and he acted upon it. He saw a problem and he decided to do the best he could to fix it. He cared about the future. He cared about making the future better. He was a great man with a moral compass and great character. In the next podcast, I'm going to be using some of John Taylor Gatto's ideas of how to make an educated person. And I'm going to try to lay out a basic formula of how you can become a great man, of how you can help push your children into becoming great men. But anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video, and I'll see you guys next time.